Hello, everybody. Now let's solve problem 7.21 together. So problem 7.21 asks us to transform sinusoidal currents into phasors. We have three different currents that we are going to transform. Each one of these, we're going to use a different algebraic trick. You probably have seen these tricks before, but I want to show them to you now so that you can see how to do them again. So let's start with part A. Let's recall that a standard sinusoid form looks like this. This one could just be a voltage, but it has an amplitude, a cosine, a, a frequency omega t, plus some phase. And we know uh, also from an identity that the sine of x is related to cosine minus 90 degrees. All right, so we have a relationship so that we could go between cosine and sine so that we could find a standard form. This is going to help us because we see that our current is given as a sine wave instead of a cosine wave. So using that identity, we can see that a standard form would be uh, amplitude plus sine of omega t plus the phase minus 90 degrees. <clears throat> All right, so if we want to convert this, we know that 75 minus 90 must be equal to the angle in this standard sinusoid. Okay, so we have the amplitude 10, we know that the frequency is 8, <clears throat> and this part, 75 minus 90, must be equal to this phase in the standard sinusoid. So this the phase is going to be equal to minus 15 degrees here. So we can substitute this in. So I1 is equal to 10 cosine 8t minus 15 degrees. So we transformed I1 from being a sinusoid to a cosinusoid. <clears throat> and if we convert this to the phasor, we can see that the amplitude goes here. And then the, this angle is minus 15. Now let's move on to part B. All right, in part B, we can see that this is already in cosine form. However, it has a negative amplitude, which we usually don't represent our phasors this way. So let's see how we can convert this to a positive amplitude. So we know that there's the identity minus cosine of x is equal to cosine of x plus or minus 180 degrees. So we will use the addition part of the identity uh, because it's convenient to represent this um, angle. <clears throat> And so we can add 180 degrees to minus 25 in order to make the amplitude positive. So we end up with I2 equals to 17 cosine 90 plus 155 degrees. Now, the main reason that we add as well is that we like to keep our limit, like we like to keep our phase angles typically between um, minus 180 and 180. All right, so this is what we get as the phasor for I2. Now, what about part C where we have current three? All right, so let's break this into two parts and let's convert part one and part two into the phasor domain. So part one is relatively easy. We can easily see that that converts to AE to the minus J 45 degrees. And then if you look on a table or look in your book, you can see that this can convert to e to the minus e to the j90. And this is a special case where e to the j90 is equal to j. Okay, so you can do that math on your own, apply the Euler formula to um, convince yourself why. But part two of this is equal to j5. All right, so now let's combine them. And we have combined them in this polar form, but they still um, don't quite add together because we want to get to one single phasor result. So let's convert this uh, back into cosines and sines <clears throat> and using the Euler identity. And we get uh, uh, arrive at this expression at the bottom where we have this part that's real and then this part that's imaginary, two, two imaginary terms. We'll combine them. And we arrive at a rectangular form of I3. So we have a rectangular result. Now, again, hopefully you have a calculator and you've learned how to quickly 
transform your results from rectangular to polar because that will make many of these problems much easier for you. And this is what I expect of you to be able to do. You can take this form and if you don't, if you are doing it the hard way, right, you would calculate both the magnitude and the phase, but you should be able to press a button on your calculator for it to quickly convert this for you so that you would arrive at being able to see that the phaser is equal to 5.7 e to the minus j.6.62. So again, let me reiterate, <clears throat> this is what you could do manually, right, to determine what the phaser is. But your calculator should have a way so that you can type in the rectangular result and it will convert it for you. This is going to save you a lot of time. So please make sure that you understand how to do that. All right, thank you. I hope this helps you understand phasers a little bit better. I will see you in the next video.